Welcome to Daily Overdose. Do you have the courage to act outwardly on what you see inwardly? Or will you die a dreamer? Will you die on the verge and on the edge and in the land of coulda, woulda, and shoulda? It is far easier not to be successful. If you don't want to make waves, be mediocre. Be normal and fit in. And some of you, there are things you like, you have absolutely no control. You are like a slave to you. You are a slave to your personality. You are a slave to some of your vices. You are a slave to some of the things you like. You are a slave. You have absolutely no control. And what I'm telling you is the reason why we fast from time to time is not that we have to fast, but at some point you got to fast because you got to tell the flesh who's in control. I'm in control. You're not in control. I know you don't want to wake up. You don't have an option. Get up. And the time is now. The secret of your success is determined by what we do daily. Make every day your masterpiece. So right now, what do you want to change? What's it really like? What do I really want in depth? What are the rituals that will get me there? And then get yourself to start a few of those actions and lock them in place. So start the new process. You can begin a new habit no matter how small it is. Small isn't important. Whether or not you start and whether or not you continue are all that is important. So to have a prosperous life, start a prosperity plan. To become wealthy, start a wealth plan. If you are ill, start a health plan. If you don't have energy, start an energy plan. If you don't feel good, start a feel good plan. If you're not smart, start a smart plan. If you can't, start a can plan. If you haven't, start a have plan. Recognize that the start of the better life, the happy life, the wealthy life, is today. Both the process and the result can begin today. Start the new journey today. If you think of a new idea, today is the day to begin the discipline of putting that idea into action. Set this day up as a long, busy, exciting start for your new life. You have to remember, all success starts with self-discipline. It starts with you. Abraham Lincoln said, discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. You only have two options. Suffer the pain of discipline or suffer the pain of regret. The choice is yours. Get some momentum going on your new commitment to the better life. Start the thrusters going. Prove to yourself that waiting is over, hoping is past, and that faith and action have now taken charge. It's a new day, a new beginning for your new life. You should use a calendar to structure your days. Because if you know what you're doing tomorrow, it decreases your anxiety substantially because you need that kind of structure. You, you need a pathway. You need to know, you need to have a map and you need to know where you're located on the map and you need to know how you're moving forward. And that gives you hope because you're moving towards goals that you regard as worthwhile. And it stops you from being anxious because you're not entirely directionless and lost. And so learning how to manage your time is useful. And you can start with a calendar. You can start with simple things like you can put in, well, when you're likely to go to bed and when you're likely to get up. And, and regulating that's useful. That should be relatively ritualistically consistent. And finally, a fifth way of being that is new. For me, it has become a way of life. It's called serenity instead of acquisitions. The more you try to acquire, the more you try to get, the more you try to collect in your life and evaluate yourself on the basis of that, the less serenity you're going to have. More is less. It's almost a secret of the universe. Serenity means inner peace. It means that you can uh, find joy in every moment that you have in your life instead of always looking for it. It means that uh, 
while you are uh, driving along the countryside, you know, and seeing uh, in instead of saying, "Oh, this is I'm on my way to this point," that you can open your eyes and see it with new eyes. See, see the rolling mountains, see the grass, see the deer, see the sky. See, you can just stop wherever you are in this second, wherever you are, and just look around you, and you can begin to appreciate just your and your surroundings and your environment then you can begin to appreciate the people that are in your life and even the ones that are negative and, and that you're having the most difficulty with you can practice a new way of being with them which is sending them love sending them flowers send them books send them tape send them something and just see what kind of reaction that you get super emotional health is just an attitude an attitude is everything the aims that you have in your life, the ethical aims, and those are the aims that direct your actions, also direct your perceptions, that this is true at a neurophysiological level, and that much of the way that the world manifests itself to you is a consequence of the structure of your ethics. So it's your ethical structure that's instantiated neurophysiologically that serves as an intermediary between the world of phenomena, let's say, um, objective phenomena and your perception of that and you see the world through an ethical lens and what I want to know is why we weren't taught these things growing up you me know, too what, <laughs> tell me right so if you were if, if they were like okay Tony we're giving you the, the key to the education system yeah and how would you apply what teachings would you apply into about finances learning about this how to generate wealth as opposed to trading time for money, but really yeah. leveraging it and investing yes. it the right way. What would you start implementing? Well, the first thing you want to teach anybody, a, a, a child, a kid, anybody is that you'll never earn your way to freedom. Mm -hmm. You just don't. You look around and you see, you know, Kurt Schilling, if you remember from Boston Red Sox, yeah. he had a hundred million dollars a year, he's broke, bankrupt. I asked Warren Buffett, I said, what made you the wealthiest man in the world? And he smiled and he said, three things. He said, living in America, it's great opportunities, having good genes, so I lived a long time. And he said, the last thing is compounded interest. Mm -hmm. And we all know about compound interest, but I, I give the example of the book of this guy, Theodore Johnson, worked for UPS, never made more than 14,000 in income in his entire life in a year. And in old age, he was worth $70 million. And how did he do it? All he did was he took a percentage of his income. This percentage was 20%. Mm -hmm. Now his family said, you can't, you can't save any money. But he right. met a friend who said, if you pretend there's a tax, and the tax just took the money away from you, and you never see it, the money just comes out of your account, goes to an investment account, you'll be financially free. So he was disciplined, he didn't look at it, it happened. $70 million by compounding. So people's mistake is, and kids don't know this, adults don't know this, that you won't earn your way there, but you can compound your way there. Yeah. What I want to do is say, where do you put that money? Yeah, that's a trick, right? That's, that's like, a secret. Well, the first trick is actually doing. Almost nobody does. Right. The second trick is you really have to understand where you're going to get hurt because mm. the fees. The fees are just destroy people. You yeah, have a whole right. chapter about the fees. I was like, this is incredible. Isn't it wild? It's nuts. Like, I mean, you lose so much money just on the fees. Well, just so people have an understanding, 96% of all mutual funds never match the market. They never beat the market. So I was just on a morning show this morning, and, uh, and Michael Bloomberg's uh, one of his guys now some of his money. So I'm, you know, this is the only industry I know of where people think they can be a doctor. They think they can be a financial planner. And I said to him, I said, well, look, the statistics, Warren Buffett taught me this. He said, Ray Dalio told me this. Uh, David Swenson who took Yale from $1 billion to $24 billion in two decades. These are people telling me. Right. <laughs> nobody beats the market except a couple of unicorns that nobody has yeah. access to. And I said, I didn't say you're not one of them. But I said, <laughs> here's the truth. 96% of mutual funds don't match the market. That means 4% succeed. Now, what are your chances of picking the right mutual fund? People don't know what they're doing. They put their money in a 401k, they pick a mutual fund not knowing what it is. If you play blackjack and you and I play and you get two face cards and your inner idiot says, hit me, Stupid. I want to I want to get <laughs> one chance in a million when you're ace. You have an 8% right. chance of winning. Right. If you try to get a mutual fund, you got the 4% chance of winning. So what I show people is not only do you not get the result, thinking logically, if I hire someone else to do it, they'll do better than me. But in addition, you pay around 2,000% more than it's worth, meaning you get the same exact product, the same mm. stocks. If you own the index, right? You own a piece of all of America's yeah. best companies, say the Vanguard 500 index, 500 top companies, that costs 0.17%, like less than two tenths of a percent versus the average mutual fund is 3.17. Incredible. <laughs> so compound over, compound over, over time. time. But, but first, just hear that so you understand. <laughs> it's like if you, the average car sold in America is a Honda Civic. It's $20,000. 
you can get the Honda Civic for twenty thousand, or you can pay three hundred fifty thousand. That's the difference between point one seven and three one seven. But if you look at it over a period of like, how old are you? Thirty one. Thirty one. Okay. So let's assume you and a couple buddies at thirty five managed to put aside hundred grand, and you manage not to add any more money, but to grow it at seven percent, spite of ups and downs in the market. And you're sixty five. How much money do you have? Well, if you paid one percent in fees. Over those 30 years, your 100 grand became 574,000 bucks. Not bad for never adding another dime. Right. If you had 3% in fees, had the same growth, but 3% in fees, you now have 300 oh, and 24,000. Almost, almost half as much. Quarter million dollars, 77% oh. less money. And, wow. and you had the same return, it was just the fees. So the world, most people ask them, what are your fees? They have no clue. Right. So I've created a site where people can go, like if I get in, you find exactly what your fees are and what you should be paying. And it just, it's highway robbery. Where in the world, would you pay two thousand about two thousand percent more for the same exact product? You can only do it because the financial industry makes things so opaque, so convoluted, and people feel overwhelmed. They don't hard to understand. Exactly. Very understand. That's why I try to come in here and go, look, time to become the chess player, not yes. the chess piece. Yeah. Let me teach you so you understand what's going on. It's not that complex. They use all these big words. Yeah. But when you know what's going on, you don't get screwed, and more importantly, you take advantage of the system instead of letting the system take advantage of you. Thank you for watching our videos. Please like and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss another video.